This video is about building, about your, building own. your own do-it-yourself toolbox war style toolbox for your bike tools. You know the kind of toolbox using a pelican case, nicely cut foam with several layers of nicely laid out tools, that kind of toolbox. For anyone who spent any amount of time working on their bike can understand the importance of an organized toolbox. For anyone who's done a multi-day road trip with their bike, they will understand the need for a good portable toolbox. This is where, in my opinion, the Toolbox Wars style toolbox reigns supreme. Over the years of racing, my toolbox has evolved in a few stages. It wasn't until recently that I upgraded to a solid Pelican case toolbox. In the early days, my toolbox was your standard metal toolbox. In my case, my toolbox was green and not red. From there, I upgraded to a three drawer metal toolbox. I did end up cutting foam for this toolbox. I first started out with the pick and pluck foam, but I found that this quickly fell apart when you had lots of tools in it. I then used furniture cushion foam. This worked, but it wasn't quite as clean. This toolbox was also way too heavy to be practical, so I eventually converted to a tool wrap. A few months back, Abbey Tools came out with a toolbox like I've always wanted. It came stock with all the tools you need for a bike trip or a bike race. But for me, the price was a little high at $13.50, especially since I already had a lot of the tools. So this got me thinking that maybe it was time for me to build my own box. Uh, so I started taking a look to see what a Pelican case would cost. As it happens, Canadian Tire was having a sale on waterproof cases at the time. And I found this one here for 50% off. It even had wheels and an extendable handle. I ended up stopping at Canadian Tire on the way home from work and bought, bought myself a case. And this is when my toolbox project had begun. The next step was to find the foam. I wanted to make sure this time that I bought the correct foam. Luckily, Abbey Tools website stated the foam that they used, so I just went with the same. This foam is called Kaizen foam. This foam is nice as it's got the strength to support your tools and it has layers as you can see that make it easier to pull the foam out after you've outlined your tools. I got my foam from Kaizen cases and inserts.com. There are probably many other places where you can get this foam. This vendor had prices and sizes that worked for me. It also shipped from Saskatchewan so I didn't have to pay any duty fees. Also, the shipping fee was only $15 flat rate. For my toolbox, the 12 inch by 24 inch size was the closest to the size I needed for my toolbox. Since my toolbox was 11 inches by 20 inches inside di dimensions. The lid of my toolbox was 40 millimeters deep, so I got two 20 millimeter sheets for my lid. I wanted some small parts organization in my toolbox, so I wanted the bottom layer to be thick. So therefore I got the 57 millimeter foam for the bottom. Based on the inside dimensions of my box, that left about 66 millimeters of room left. Uh, so I bought two 30 millimeter foam sheets to, for the mid layers. I wanted a nice clean method of pulling the middle layers out to access the lower layers. So I bought some polypropylene webbing from Amazon for the handles. This stuff is pretty cheap. It comes in various widths and colors. For my project, I bought the three quarter inch width and the color black. I knew it wasn't gonna need much for this, so I only bought 10 yards. With the removable middle layers, I wanted to make sure the foam was supported. Um, so I bought acrylic sheet from Amazon to use as the backing board for the middle layers. I had originally planned on using wood which would have been cheaper, but the thin plywood from Home Depot came in eight foot sheets and I didn't want to bother with dealing with the extra length and the extra material. So for simplicity's sake, for my project, I chose to use acrylic. Now here are the tools I used when making my toolbox. The foam required cutting, so obviously I used a utility knife. 
Make sure the knife is sharp and can cut the depth needed for all your tools. The carpenter square was useful for the straight edge to cut the foam to the dimensions of the inside of the toolbox. I used permanent marker to trace out the outline of my tools. I also used a large washer to trace out the finger points to help pull the tools out of the foam. I used needle and thread because I thought this was the most secure way to attach the handles. I'll show you how to do this in a bit. I used hot glue to attach the backing board to the foam and the handles. In hindsight, this was a bad idea and I would not do this again. First step, cut the foam inserts to the inside dimensions of your toolbox. If your toolbox is like mine, it might have come with foam sheets already in the box. Use these foam sheets to cut the templates to draw the outline of your new foam layers. Use a utility knife and the carpenter square to cut each of your foam sheets to size. Second step, make the handles. I started by marking out the location of the handles for my middle layers. I decided I wanted my handles three quarter inches in from the edges and five inches long. You want the handles to be as small as possible and as close to the edge as possible to not take up precious room in your foam for your tools. Since the handles will be looped through the foam, you will need to cut a slot through the thickness of your foam, the width of your handles. Start by extending your utility knife so that it is long enough to cut through your foam. Start by cutting the slots along the top of your handle outline. The slots only need to be the width of the utility knife blade. Once the slots are cut, start to cut a pocket for the handles to sit in. This way the handles will be flush with the top of your foam. Be careful to only cut one sublayer deep into the foam along each side of the handle outline. Once both sides of the outline are cut, pull the top layer of the foam out. Repeat for all handles. Now take the handle webbing and feed it into the slots you just cut. Wrap it back through the other slot. 
before the handle so that the open ends of the webbing are on the same side. Measure out the length you need to comfortably get your hands under the handle. I recommend overlapping the webbing by the length of your handles. When you've settled on a length, cut the webbing to size. Remove the handle now from the foam so that you can use it as a template to cut the remainder of the handles. Insert the handles back into the foam so that the open side of the webbing is on the bottom of your foam. Next up, it's time to sew. I sewed each handle in two spots. I started with the close end to make it easier to sew the second spot. I chose to sew the handles together because I thought it was the simplest and most inexpensive way to do this. I already had needle and thread from modifying a tube wrap for frame storage. Sewing wasn't a very quick way of doing this. There are probably other methods out there. If you don't know how to sew, I recommend watching some YouTube videos on the topic. Once you have finished sewing the first side of the handle, repeat with the open side of the handle. Once both sides of the handle are sewn, repeat for all other handles. Step three, the backing board for the middle layers. As mentioned earlier, this was a bad idea and I wouldn't recommend this method. The hot glue solidified too fast and forced me to rush through this step. I had practiced on a small section of foam. It worked good, but it didn't scale well to the full size. I had to be careful that the glue gun did not touch the foam. This was because the glue nozzle was hot enough to melt the foam. The glue itself, though, cooled quickly enough that the foam did not melt. 
Because of this, I applied the glue to the acrylic board. I also made sure that I got glue on the handle webbing so that there was a good bond between the handles and the backing board. In hindsight, I would have made a pocket for the handles on both sides of the foam. I expected the foam to have enough compression to allow the thin handle webbing to be absorbed by the foam. The combination of the webbing and the glue caused the handles to sit a little higher on the board than I would have liked. Another issue I noticed was the heat of the glue was enough to warp the acrylic a bit. After a couple of weeks in the toolbox, the warping has mostly gone away. If I were to redo this step, I would have changed a couple things. One, as I mentioned before, I would have cut pockets on the bottom side of the foam for the handles. And two, I would have found a different adhesive. Something that doesn't rely on heat with a longer curing time. Step four, cutting out the tools. I worked on this project slowly over a few months after I purchased the toolbox. So I had some time to play around with the arrangements of the tools. Some of my layers are similar to the tool arrangements in the Abbey Toolbox. My advice is to keep the tools you need frequently on the most accessible layers. For this reason, I located my Allen keys, shock pump, tire gauge, and tire levers on the lid layer and the top layer of my toolbox. When considering the arrangement of your tools, make sure your foam is thicker than the tools so that they don't stick out of the foam. Once you have settled on an arrangement, trace out the tools with a permanent marker. Begin cutting your foam one layer at a time. Make sure you cut along the inside of your trace line to make the pocket for your tools a little smaller than the tool. This will allow the foam to squeeze your tools a bit so that they are more secure in the foam. This is especially important if you have tools in the lid as they might fall out every time you open your toolbox. Cut the foam layer by layer until the tool is below the surface of the foam. When you have your tool pockets cut to the correct depth, grab the large washer or other circular template and trace out your pluck points to pull out your tools. These pluck points only need to be as deep as necessary to easily pull the tools out of the foam. Because my lid was 40 millimeters deep, I had to use two pieces of 20 millimeter foam. To attach the two pieces, I again used hot glue. I still recommend finding a different adhesive. I cut the tool pockets out of the top piece of foam before gluing the sheets together. I did it in this order because I would know where I would need the glue between my tools. 
Many of my tools were deeper than a single 20 millimeter sheet. After the sheets were glued together, I continued to cut the tool pockets deeper that required it. And that's about all I have to say. If you don't want to watch the next 5 to 10 minutes of me cutting foam, fast forward to the end to see the final product.
Now for the final product. The final weight of the toolbox was about 25 pounds. It has 30 tools, which includes two complete Allen key sets, two water bottles, and two small parts containers. I really like this case because it has an extendable handle and wheels. This will make it a lot easier to move in and out of my apartment as well as back and forth from the car to the race tent. One of the small parts containers on the bottom layer holds chain lubes, grease, and bleed tools to reduce the contamination to the other parts of the toolbox. The brake fluid didn't fit in the container, so it's in its own Nalgene bottle that I tested for leaks. The silver bottle is a spray bottle, which is full of isopropyl alcohol. I bought this spray bottle on Amazon. Well, that's it. For more details, see my blog post. Link in the description below. Thanks.